All right. I'm sorry for about giving all praises and glories unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Harakakodash, double honor to the elder apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well, and greeting salutations and blessings unto the hopeful elect uh, that give their life in all diligence to get their salvation. Shalom unto you. All right, I got a quick lesson, man. Um, you uh, you look at these church pastors the other day on TV. They had a lady pastor uh, slash evangelist slash uh, I call her just a motivational speaker, Joyce Meyer, going into um, this parable, and and as she touched on it, you know, it's cool as a motivational uh, uh, perspective to teach from, but. The deeper meanings come from the, the real understanding of the scriptures. And she, she wasn't imparted with, with wisdom and understanding. Nor does she have the proper doctrine of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai to get the full understanding. Besides the fact that she's an Edomite. I, I figure she's an Edomite, I guess. You know, I don't know. White lady. But um, the, the bottom line is she don't have the fruits of the wisdom of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. So I just want to kind of go into this and break it down because this is a... A church favorite, okay? Christian church favorite, okay? So I'm going to go into it and break it down, okay? That's the definition that you're looking at, and we'll get into that in a moment, you know? But um, we're going to read the scripture. It says, uh, this is the parable of the lost son, as it says in my KJV Bible. It says, uh, this is Luke chapter 15, verse 11. It says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And then this is Yahweh Shai, who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. That's his real name in the Lashwan Kodash, or the Paleo Hebrew uh, tongue. Okay, that's how you say his name in real life, Yahweh Shai, which the Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, not God, not Lord, not Yeshua, not uh, uh, Yahweh, Yehovah, none of those. Okay, and there was no letter J back then. Okay, he didn't come to the 1600s. So just to, to if you're tuning into this video, uh, understanding that will get you uh, in, a, in a nice uh, further place with this thing, okay? Understanding that perspective of things. One second. All right. So it says, um, And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me, and he divided unto him his living. Yeah, you know, an inheritance. Father, give me my inheritance, and I'm going to bounce. It says, um, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Okay, it says prodigal or wasteful. Now, when we go into the word prodigal, it says, uh, let me throw the word out there. Prodigal. Prodigal, right? It says spending money or resources freely and recklessly wasteful extravagant wastefully extravagant that sound like jake man jake jake get a little money where he get his income tax or whatever would jake do jake go buy rims jake go buy another car you live in an apartment but you got a dope ass car you know and you had the money to to get a, a, a better situation living situation okay jake still living in the hood or living with his mom driving uh, 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 uh you know a, a dope ass car man rimmed out all of that jewelry jake got all that but don't know where to put his money uh, uh <clears throat> as far as sustaining himself properly jake go spend it all up go buy out the bar hit the club do all these things and not put it toward getting a job you know putting it toward a career investing within himself investing in his family you know not to say to invest to to sustain yourself uh, uh, to be here in America because America is going to get destroyed. There's no no reason to invest in America, but you can invest in yourself or at least into your spirituality towards your salvation. Get, learn a skill, you know, sustain yourself so you can you can build yourself up. And that'll take you a lot further than the, than the frivolous stuff that Jake go by. Jake go by, Jake, you know, I want to spend $500 on a, on a, on a rare pair of Jordans. Come on, man. That, what is, you don't even play ball in those. You know what I'm saying? So that's that type of spirit Jake does have on him, prodigal. Okay, the, the second definition said prodigal habits die hard, right? And some of the synonyms was wasteful, extravagant, spendthrift, 
uh, profligate, profligate, improvident, and uh, impertinent. Yeah, uh, verse two says having or giving something on a lavish scale. Jake want to live large and live lavishly, but don't have the social status or the or the money to really play that out. You know, you're not on that level right now, Jake. We're in captivity. We're on punishment from the Most High God. We didn't obey His statute, laws, and commandments, so we have these curses on us that we're never going to get on that level until we come back to the Heavenly Father, or He redeems us back through His elect. Okay, for foremost through Yahweh Shai. Okay, our, our Lord and Savior. All right. I said a person who spends money in a reckless, extravagant way. All right, now that's what he did. He went out there and bought the bar out, had his women, and you know he went out there. And did all those things, but this this is gonna this uh, prodigal son or lost son is gonna um it should it should educate you or, or, or give you wisdom on many levels, not just about reckless living. Okay, <clears throat> and her and Joyce Meyer in particular, the angle that she played with this was was the party angle with the father. You know how the father looked at it, but we'll get to that. It says, uh, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. He was broke, he needed some things. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine, gave him a job. And he, and he would fain, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks of the swine uh, that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father's house and my father's have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. You know, my father had plenty of, and his servants have plenty of food, but I'm going to perish from hunger. And I'm, my father has good, good money, good food. Well, his servants eat well. And I'm going to die of hunger. That just don't make no sense. It says, uh, I, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Now, here is, is where the spiritual tie in that Joyce Myers didn't even attempt to go into. OK. The father is who? Yahweh, the most high God. And who is the, who is the servant? It's Israel, his, ch his chosen people, Israel. You know, when we left and gathered up all our things, and we left, when you go to the, I'm going to go there, the book of Hosea. Um, bear with me one second. The book of Hosea. Um, let me get to the point. Um. When the Most High uh, did away with us and turned his back on us, that was us leaving to be joined on to these other gods, okay? These other deities that are no gods. These other idols, okay? So I'm going to jump to the point uh, that I want to hit real quick. Mm -hmm. um, let me go to uh, Israel's like a, a, a comely woman, right? So I'm going um, to see um, Hosea 2 and 2. It says, <clears throat> plead with your mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts and her heart, you know, and, and her loins. Lest I strip her naked and set her as the day as she were born and make her as a wilderness and set her like in a dry land and slay her with thirst. And that's what happened to the prodigal son. But that's what happened to Israel. You so-called Negro, Latinos and Native Americans. That's the sense of the curses being on you and, and without the blessings of, of Yahweh. OK, because he kept us sustained in a beautiful uh, country in, in, our, in our chosen land. With Israel, which was in the land of Canaan before it became our land, you know, he kept us fed, he kept us blessed. We were, we were mighty in war. Time of King David, at the time of King Solomon, there had not been another country to live on that type of level like we live, okay? 
But then what do we do? We join ourselves unto unto all these other nations and their idols, and we got we get destroyed. Okay, and these other these other uh, 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 nations have run through us. Okay, because we played the harlot with the, with them. Okay, and that's what the prodigal sons taught about. Let me keep reading a little more. It says, and I will not have mercy, this is still in Hosea, the second chapter, the fourth verse, and I will not have mercy upon her children, for they will be children of whoredoms, for their mother hath played the harlot, she has conceived them, she that conceived them have done shamefully, Israel, you you eat pork, you, you, you're all in the um, idolatry, you, into the, uh, you, you believe in Jesus, not in Yahweh Shai, but you follow after Jesus, and Mary, and Tammuz, and, and Semiramis, you know, that's what Tammuz and Mary and baby Jesus is, Semiramis and Tammuz, idols, um, as well as uh, Islam and Muslim and Pan-Africanism and money and, and Baphomet. And you, you people are into everything, man. The natives in the rain gods and, and, and all types of sun god and all of this. Egyptian, thinking you Egyptians. Our people are lost, all right? Gone after these other nations uh, would hoard them. Okay, not realizing the book that's before your eyes is the book that brings us back to our heritage, man. Okay, the KJV Bible, 1611, will bring you back to your heritage heritage of being an Israelite for you Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, and confusion of faces also, if the Most High see fit to open up your eyes. And he's opening up a lot of Jake's eyes. Okay, you, 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 you uh, sons and daughters of Jacob, okay? He's opening up your eyes. To see this book and to see the truth that we are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. Okay? Anyway, it says, uh, For your mother hath played the harlot, and she has conceived them that done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers that give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, mine oil and my drink. All the luxuries and pleasures of life. I'm going to go get it from somebody else, not the Creator, not the Heavenly Father, not our chosen that chose us. Okay? It says, therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her past. And that was when the famine came in the land for the prodigal son. OK, it became difficult. Now he had to go out to the field to eat the husks that fed the, um, the swine in the field with a job. But he thought about it and he said, my father has servants that eat better than I do, but I'm going to starve to death. I'm going to go back to my father and, and, and confess my my faults before him. Okay, to acknowledge my offense. Okay, it says, uh, and she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, back to my father. Right? For then was it better with me now, me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for by all. But you, I gave you all that substance so you could sustain yourself, all your portion that was coming to you as your father. But you what? You went off and spun it out there recklessly, prodigally. Okay? It says, therefore, will I return and take away my corn in the time thereof and, and my wine in the season thereof? And will recover my wool and my flax eat, uh, given to cover her nakedness. And now will I discover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers. And none shall deliver her out of mine hand. And that's what the Most High is doing right now. Nobody can save us out of this. The Most High is destroying us. And nobody can say. You look at the condition of our people today. And you can see how destroyed the Most High has allowed us to become. How he is. Th these curses is all. We're draped in these curses. We're beaten all the day long with life. Okay? And, 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 our, and our people have no knowledge, wisdom, or understanding of anything but wickedness and BS. Okay? You think you oh, I'm, I'm deep. I'm conscious. I'm going, I'm, you know, I'm my deep black consciousness, my sister, Jehovah Jireh. You're going to all of these other religions and, 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 and trains of thought that's so far from the Heavenly Father. You're still lost. You might as well be a damn Satan worshiper. Okay, that's how far off all these other doctrines are away from Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Okay, but when you hear about Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, a lot of you people, two-thirds of you, scoff at it. 
and scoff at the idea of the Heavenly Father and the responsibility that, that, that you now have to, to, uh, to, to serve to be with the Heavenly Father. And that's why it's going to destroy you people. Okay? Now I'm going to go back. Let me go back to um, Luke and to the parable itself. Um, yeah, it says uh, verse, back in Luke 15, verse 18, I will arise and go to my Father and, will, and I will say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Humbled himself. Okay. He acknowledged his offenses and humbled himself. It says, uh, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And, his, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. He fulfilled that even though his father uh, had compassion upon him. He still acknowledged his offenses to his father and humbled down. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Hey, deck him out right now. This is my son. Deck him out. And that's what the Most High is going to do to us. He's going to deck us out. He's going he to jewel us up and deck us out. How? First with these newly created bodies, these extraterrestrial bodies first. But well, well, if you want to start at the origin of it, he's starting with this wisdom he's given us. And these are the white, the wisdom is the white robes that he's given us. His name, the power of his name. Okay. Our identity back. That's how he first decks us out, all right? Then he's actually going to give us spiritual power with these new bodies when we come out that chariot, okay? And then when we come back upon the earth, he's literally going to deck us out with the finest physical things on the planet, the gold and the, and the, and the fine clothing and, the, and all that other stuff, okay? All the stuff that the Gentiles seek for, all the other things that, that you people want but don't know how to... Uh, but don't deserve all right all the things that you hope for but you don't want to put the work in to get the wisdom where it or originates from king solomon the, the the king that lived that way and all his house lived that way he what did he honor he honored wisdom so he would reign forevermore so you got to start with the wisdom and this is what joyce meyer and, and a lot of you christians don't go into a lot of you people don't go into you don't go in, into the wisdom and get dressed within this wisdom first in, in humility. All right. Uh, it says, um, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and began to be merry and they began to be merry. And, and it's going to get deeper into the older brother in a minute, okay? It's going to get into the, to the mentality of the older brother because a lot of you guys don't understand how this is supposed to break down, okay? Why do they begin to be married? Hey, because he's returned. He's returned. He, he, he was gone, and now we got him back. Israel was dead, and now we're back. Now, that's cool for you other uh, uh, Israelite groups that think it's all about the 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 uh the being merry and, and going to the house of feasting and doing all of that that's all cool but you don't understand that this ain't that time yet we're not past it yet when we get into those chairs and we come back down and we get into the kingdom that's when we get there when we get back to the father 100 percent not just knowing that we can go back to the father he wasn't merry when he said i oh, now I need to go back to my father and humble down and hopefully he'll have mercy upon me and i'll be like his servant that's where we're at we're not back to the father yet we ain't at the part where he going to deck us out and, uh, and, and, and be married with us. That ain't that time yet. All right? That's out of season. We're still in the wilderness or still in the field with the, uh, with the husks, starving. That's where we're at, according to this right now, when you measure the time diligently. Okay? Because there's a lot of worse things coming. All right? Martial law, race riots. Okay, World War Three is coming, famines coming. Okay, cannibalism. All these things are still coming to the earth, man. You got to deal with these. Even the men of the Lord got to deal with this, but the men of the Lord won't be overtaken by these things. Okay, 
so you un so you can understand. Um, I'm gonna keep reading. Oh, okay, yeah, here we go. Verse 25. Now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house and heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. Hey, what's going on around here? Everybody chilling and being happy. What's going on? He said, and he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father have killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. Because he had received him safe and sound. We're not received safe and sound. We're not the elect is gonna have that party, but it ain't the time for that party. Right? Now, the thing that Joyce Meyer was breaking down in a motivational way was Oh, let's have a party because you you've returned, and this God loves a party. Come on and party, you know. You know He loves a party. Come on and party and be happy and be merry. Don't don't always look at the negative things and look at the positive things. The Father looked at the positive things. That's what she's breaking it down as, which is a lesson that you can learn from this. But it's not the most important lesson to be learned from this. The most important lesson to be learned is we're not there yet. We're not at the time to party. We want to get to that, but it takes a lot of work to get to that, okay? To that partying stage. All right? It takes time to get... Matter of fact, before I go too far, um, let me go into this in uh, Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, just so you can see it for yourself. Ecclesiastes 7 and 2, it says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the of the countenance the heart is made better. You're made sharper by understanding the worst situations. But you can enjoy and rejoice, but you gotta still stick to that. You can't like like some people don't, don't want to deal with no negativity. All positive love only and, and whatever. Man, that's BS. That's not balance. Life comes with balance, but the way you uh, look at it, it is important that you keep a positive uh, uh, outlook on it. The positive outlook is even when I go through something bad, the Most High is, is teaching me something. He's, he's giving me another opportunity to teach me something. And whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, okay? You go into, I believe that's Hebrews, the 12th chapter. All right? Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. All right? Remember that part, okay? Now let me jump down. Uh, verse 4, is still in Ecclesiastes 7 and 4, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Okay? Now let me um go back. I had that. I didn't have that for you. Okay, let me go back. This is back in the book of Luke. Alright? But we're not in that time yet, is the point. Uh, she breaks it down. So, yeah, you got to be positive and he loves a party. We're not at that partying stage yet. Joyce Meyer's thinking there's going to be a rapture and nobody's going to get touched and happy clouds and white Jesus coming down to pluck people out and, and get them the rapture and clouds and rainbows. And man, all that ain't about to go down, man. Not like that. Okay? When Howard Shai returns, he's coming back with a vengeance, man, to kill the two-thirds and to set the world aright and get rid of the wickedness off the, off the planet. He's going to take... The Edomites out of their power structure. He's going to subdue all the nations of the earth. All the other nations that have any type of power. So he's going to subdue you. Alright. When I say subdue. He's going to kill you and take the power from you. To where you humble down. And you come in and you deliver all your substances and goods to him. Okay. You're going to walk him right into the kingdom of heaven. Alright. Uh, reading on. Uh, verse uh, twenty. Uh, eight. It says, and he this is back in Luke fifteen twenty eight. It says, and he said unto wait wait, and he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. The older son like, hey son, come on into the party, man. We the brother back. We chilling, man. Come have a good time with us, right? He says, uh, and he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed. I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, a, um, a fatted calf. It says that I might make merry with my friends. Jealous. He got jealousy in his heart, man. Dude got jealousy in his heart, right? 
That's that's the that's how Esau is, and that's how you two thirds are, man. You want to go get yours now without putting the work in. Why is this dude special? Well, I'm special because I put the work in. I wouldn't do what I had to do. All right? You've had the blessing, and this is going to get to this point. You've had the blessing of being with the Father all these years and having transgressed because you know how the Father gets down. I went out and took a risk. Yeah, I messed up, but I learned now, and I humbled down to it. All right? And I think the Father's about to say something to that effect. But as soon as this, as this thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, and has killed him, uh, thou hast killed him, the fatted calf. As soon as he go off and squander his money off with harlots and rides his living, you get this dude with the fatted calf. Man, what's up? The son said, to, the uh, elder son said to the father, it says, and he said to him, son. Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. You are my oldest, and you're always with me. All that I have is yours. You can have, and she said this, you can have a party anytime you want to. We live, we, we feast every night at dinner, is how you got to look at it. It's kind of how she, she didn't say that, but that's kind of how it is. But we're, you're automatically tapped into the power and the wisdom of the Heavenly Father. You know, but to re and I, matter of fact, let me go back. Let me go to another scripture real quick. You know, bear with me. Um, in the book of Ezekiel, my Ezekiel that should be right here. <clears throat> um, let me see if I can find the good one. Um, this is Ezekiel 3 and 20. It says, again, when a righteous man do turn from his righteousness. Wait, wait, wait. That's not what I want. Yeah, it's verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man, and the righteous man sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live. Because Wait, wait. Let me get the one that I actually really want. Because it's going to say how much the, the Most High loves uh, when a man turns from, 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 from sin to, to righteousness. Okay, I should probably look it up and do real quick. Uh, yeah, no, no, this is verse 18. It says, when, a, when I shall say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but the blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wicked way, nor from wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man do turn from his iniquity and commit... I know where it's at. Salakia, y'all, bear with me one second. I know where the one that I really want is at. It's, yeah, the Lord loveth when you return from wickedness to righteousness, okay? So let me go... Let me to get to the point of this, man. Let me get back to Luke, the book of Luke. Back in Luke 15... And wrap this up. You know, if you know where it's at, drop it in the comment section. Lord love it. Uh, when you return from wickedness to righteousness, I don't. I don't really have the time to, to put all into this, uh, in this lesson. But uh, you guys understand the point of that. Anyway, it says, um, uh, let me go back to verse thirty-one, Luke fifteen and thirty-one, and he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Okay, we're back with the Father, which means we have the guidance when we're with the Heavenly Father again. He can correct and get us back where we need to be and get us back into the righteousness. But we it starts with the wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Shai. It starts with being in the presence of the Father. Okay? And for the brother to be jealous and to be envious and to be angry, you was living good. Yeah, you had to work, but he's coming back to work too. You know, he went off and partied and then lived it up, but, you know, but now he's back and he understands how hard a living it was. And he was damn near about to die from starvation and, and homeless and, and, and without work, you know, and then he didn't spun up all his inheritance as well. Okay. For you that can't see it on a spiritual level, the spiritual level of it 
is that he's back with the Heavenly Father, man, and the wisdom of it, because he's living right there with him. And that's something to rejoice at. So we're going to rejoice being back with the Heavenly Father. We rejoice with having the full understanding of this wisdom and these prophecies. But we cannot rejoice yet, man. We still got to go and push this word out until we get our salvation. Okay, that's the better understanding of the prodigal son breakdown. Not just, it's okay to party. God loves a party, son. Yeah, I'm here to party for you because I want you to feel good. And then the other son, why are you mad? Come on into the party and have a good time. And we'll throw you a party next week. That ain't what this is about. That ain't what this is about. The parable of the wedding and those that couldn't get in. The older brother didn't have the right, the right uh, mentality to get in. But because he was with the father, the father got his mind right to get in there. That's another way of saying when the Heavenly Father writes these statutes, laws, and commandments in our hearts. Well, we're going to live it perfectly. Okay? That's what's, what there's something to, re, to rejoice with. That's us being back with him and deserving that party to rejoice and to make merry. Okay? But that time is not yet. We got a lot of bad coming first before we get to that. Okay? Martial law. Race riots. The economic collapse. Okay? Uh, famine. And when famine comes, uh, um, the uh, cannibalism, pe people going to really, uh, you watch these movies, The Road, you watch uh, Book of Eli and, books like, and movies like that, people going to chase you down to try to kill you and eat you. Okay? The elect is going to be protected, but everybody else is going to be in all types of torment and disarray and their minds are going to be bugged out and everything else, man. Okay? So anyway, with that, I'm going to give all praise and glories unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Kodash, which is how these things, are, uh, this information is transferred unto us, or downloaded into us, okay? Through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, okay? So uh, so getting the full breakdowns of the, of the scriptures is where, where the power really lies at, man. Not where you guys is, oh, I, Joyce Meyer made me feel good. Having the, the, the consciousness and wisdom of it, no, man. Get the full breakdowns of this thing. All that playtime is over for all the mother uh, uh, ways of living, man. From all the mother um, uh, uh, belief systems, okay? And the word system means a pit. This right here, this wisdom, this understanding is about uh, getting you on a higher level, which is closer to the Most High God, okay? And, and earning your salvation through it by passing it on for others that can earn their salvation, all right? Anyway, so with that, all praise and glory to the Yahweh by Shemar Shai. Bashim Arakakodash, double on to the elder apostles and elders that great millstone who rule well, and greetings, salutations, and blessings unto the whole for elect. Shalom.